Again! It's over! He's done it again! Unbelievable! Oh, oh, straight into the roof of the net. Nice one. Straight down the middle. So, a good performance on both teams. Hello and welcome to First Sports. I'm Rupa Ramani. Let's get started. Right, on the show today, violence, drama, revenge and reload. It's redemption time for Kolkata at the Indian Premier League and who better than Gotham Gambhir to lead the charge? Is Kolkata's Benjamin buttoning their way to IPL glory this season? We look at their campaign from the dressing room to the cricket pitch. And speaking of vengeance, can you trust Croatian ultras, the football fanatics, to let a loss slip away with no harm done? Fans clashed in hordes and even ended up attacking the police. Many arrested. Shocking images of what went down coming right up. And what is it about Croatian ultras and a history of rage? Also switching tracks to Formula One. Will Turkey be able to do the impossible and get Formula One back on home turf? Maybe if Erdogan has his way. But stay on for more of this. First up though, Sports 360. Over in football, Arsenal cruised to a 2-0 win over Luton Town in the English Premier League. With the win, Arsenal are now on top of the points table. Meanwhile, Manchester City beat Aston Villa 4-1 last night. Phil Foden scored a hat-trick to keep Manchester City's title dreams alive. In tennis, former world number one Simona Halep has received a wild card entry at the Madrid Open as well. Halep previously won the Madrid Open on two occasions, in 2016 and 2017. She, of course, is returning to com competitive tennis just last month after her doping ban got revoked. This will be her second tournament on her comeback trail. In Formula One, four-time world champion Sebastian Vettel hinted that he might make a comeback to the sport. Vettel reportedly said that he was potentially in the market for a 2025 seat. Vettel also said he had a brief conversation with Mercedes boss Toto Wolff. With 100 days to go for the Paris Olympics and a shocking move, French police removed dozens of migrants from the city. This included families with women and children under the age of 10. The migrants were sent to a temporary government housing in eastern France, all in an attempt to, quote-unquote, clean up the place for the Olympics. NFL star and Super Bowl winner Rashi Rice has admitted his involvement in the April 1st Texas hit-and-run case via his social media handle. Rice, who plays for Kansas City Chiefs, has assured his cooperation with the authorities in this regard. Two people had been injured in that car crash on Saturday. Rice was driving one of the cars. There's lots happening at the Indian T20 League. The IPL, so we got to pay some attention to that. And today it's one team in particular, Kolkata. They're looking lean and mean and they sit on top of the points table. They have looked the most solid and unshakable side in the tournament so far. Got me thinking, what is different about Kolkata this particular season? Well, it has to be this man, of course, Gotham Gambhir, Kolkata's messiah, the man who seems to be doing no wrong as long as he wears the purple and gold. Now, I had to give a rider here because you know the kind of trajectory Gambhir has enjoyed in the IPL. It has been a, color, a colourful many years, not just as player, but also now as mentor. Remember his run-ins with Virat Kohli while he was with the Lucknow franchise. And of course, Lucknow as a franchise, while Gambhir was at the helm, showed some glimmer of hope, but that fizzled out. As a unit, as a team, somehow, it didn't quite work. Gambhir, the player too, was just as hot-headed. Here is one cricketer turned commentator, now of course mentor, who has not really mellowed down so much with age. But Kolkata and Gambhir's love story has been just as fiery. They forged a relationship that was gold when he was captain at the franchise. Shah Rukh Khan's romance and Gambhir's drama was the perfect Bollywood spicy affair that proved to be a blockbuster. Kolkata franchise, the product of that. Victories they cherished only when these two were together, 2012 and of course then 2014. Golden years for the franchise and Gotham Gambhir in particular. And sources in the Kolkata franchise now say the biggest difference to the outfit this year has been Gothi. Gotham Gambhir. They say there is a sense of calmness and reassurance that has come back into the camp. 
They all feel as equals, respected, and that has just meant that they all want to come together to win it again, just to give it back to him. A happy dressing room, they say, is a performing dressing room. And Gambhir has made that possible. The announcement of Gotham Gambhir returning that came in just before the start of the season sent tingles down everyone's spines. But now that the tournament is well and truly underway, those tingles are transferring to lightning bolts in the air. They posted the second highest total in the league so far against a hapless Delhi side whose biggest silver lining has been their tenacious captain returning to form and returning after a break, Rishabh Pant. But 272 runs is a colossal affair and everyone came to party. It isn't just Gambhir's comeback to the Eden Gardens that seems to be doing the trick. I have to speak first of Sunil Narayan. The man seemed to have lost his touch as an opening bat some years ago, forcing Kolkata to rethink their strategy and get Jason Roy to open. The absence of Roy power, of course, prompted them to somehow revert to that old strategy and that seems to be the theme for this franchise this season. Rolling back the years, back to the future in some sense. What worked in the past is working again. Sunil Narayan smashed 85 runs to really put Delhi in a load of misery. Andre Russell is at it again, just when you thought that this West Indian has probably had his time in the IPL sun. How many more sixes really? How many more wickets? Dre Russ tells you it's in keeping with the Kolkata theme. He's Benjamin buttoning their way. A cameo of 41, gold for Kolkata. I have to mention the newbie, Ankrish Raghuvanshi. Any kid, all of 18 years, scoring the fastest half century in the league ought to raise some eyebrows. Of appreciation, 54 of 27 deliveries. There is no innocence in the way he plundered the runs. A teenager thrown into the harshest limelight had to be freedom of expression and the sense of aggression that Gambhir would have inspired and probably some of it already there. Because he greeted Andrik Nock here with two consecutive boundaries of the first two deliveries he faced here. And there was no looking back. Rinku Singh, sure it was a short cameo, but the clamour for him to be included in India's T20 World Cup squad is getting louder by the day. It's like that is the first question every fan is screaming out. I hear you. But are the selectors just as confident yet? The bowlers led by Vaibhav Arora and Mitchell Stark put the pressure on the Delhi batters. After that, the wily Varun Chakravarti quietly wrapped things up. It was an all-round power-packed display. Gambhir would only have been too proud of this. Some weeks back though, there were reports that came out of players, especially the foreign players, being stifled by Chandrakant Pandit, the man who had been brought on board as coach that he was strict and a hard disciplinarian. Sources also said he was putting in way too many rules and restrictions on the players as he'd had when he'd come on board. No sleeveless clothes, lectures after losses. It's a story that has now been put on pause because there is a new cop in town and that cop says no rules, just play freely. Gambhir's attitude, his aggressive intent, his love for the place that where it all started and turned to gold is clearly reflecting in the way this bunch is playing their cricket. Gothi ball is showing its magic. Croatia, a small country in Europe, spread roughly across 22,000 square miles and with a population of just 3.9 million and with a relatively smaller demography, you don't need too many things to bond over. One is enough and that happens to be football. No surprises there. The country is united in their passion for the sport. It's not like they have had too many historic achievements to rave about. In the international stage, they've played only six FIFA World Cups ever. So the Croatian fans we spot are seriously passionate about the sport. And just yesterday, that passion transformed into an ugly display rather quickly, turning into a very violent affair. The event, Croatia National Cup semi-final, Dinamo Zagreb, beat Hajduk split 1-0 to enter the final. But the split ultras, for the uninitiated, ultras are football fanatics for whom passion is a gross understatement. Now, the split ultras known as Torcida didn't take the loss all too lightly. They rushed onto the field to attack the Zagreb players. And not just the players, they tried to unleash their fury on the Zagreb supporters too. The matter got too hot to handle and the cops had to intervene to try and break up the commotion and somehow try to stop the violence. The police came on and pushed the split fans back onto the stands. 
The matter, though, didn't end there. How would it? It is Croatia and football. There is a mean streak here and fans don't take losses too well. This face-off did not not abate despite police intervention. In fact, it only escalated. The cops may have separated the hordes of fighters in the stadium, but it continued and gained momentum out on the streets. Angry mobs of football fans clashed right outside the stadium. And this time, the subject of their ire and violence became the cops. The split fans erupted through flares, bottles, stones and any object that could inflict damage and harm. You've got to see it to believe it. Reports say about three officers were hospitalized due to all the brutality that took place. The nature of their injuries, of course, isn't all too clear yet. But this was football frenzy at its peak that just went out of control. A police vehicle also got damaged during the rampage. The mayhem also prompted the firefighters to be called in to extinguish blazes that had also been started nearby by the fans. And more than 50 people have been arrested. The city mayor, Ivika Pulyak, was disheartened by this barbaric display over a football match. No justification for the violence. I am sorry for such unpleasant scenes and I hope we will never see them again in our city. This is of course not Croatia's first brush with violence over at, of this scale over football. And guess what? These very same fan clubs were involved before too. Torcida, the Split Ultras and Bad Blue Boys, the Zagreb Ultras have had a long-standing rivalry. From hatred to cooperation ever since 1980s and now it's back. The two clubs are the worst offenders when it comes to hooliganism and violence. The cities are separated by just 220 miles but their rivalries are far-reaching. In May 2022, when Hajduk split lost 3-1 to arch-rivals Dynamo Zagreb, it resulted in a massive violent face-off between fans. Cops got involved here too. Around 35 people were badly injured, 20 of them cops. Among those injured four fans with bullet wounds. Many rioters were arrested back then too, close to 50 again. But this raging history is part of the Croatian football culture, the ethos. The bad blue boys have had a rather violent streak. Dynamo Zagreb were playing AEK Athens in a Champions League qualifier in Greece. The year is 2023. The bad blue boys were at it again. But this time they did not even wait for the game to start off. To begin their violence. They unleashed fury on AEK Athens supporters before the game, right during a practice session outside the stadium a day earlier. The fury resulted in more than 100 fans facing murder charges. A 29-year-old Greek fan was in fact stabbed to death. That match was postponed with no fan attendance when it finally took place. Even back in 2022, during Croatia's World Cup ground group stage clash against Canada, Croatian fans abused Canadian goalkeeper Milan Borhan. The matter turned ugly and Croatian Football Association finally was held responsible and they were fined $53,000 for what their fans had indulged in. Now I understand the rivalry, I understand the passion fans have for their club, their country, but fanatic, fanatic acts have no place in sporting landscape. The sporting equation is completely taken out. It goes beyond that realm into one of law and order. And what these fanatic groups are doing is tainting the image of a country. Many would think twice now before heading to Croatia to watch a football game if these acts continue unhindered and unregulated. Now, Turkey, with its scenic beauty, unique cuisines and the right weather, is perfect setting for any sporting event. It's a pity though that there aren't any global sporting events that come to Turkey. The recent controversies plaguing football and volleyball, of course, violence permeating sport there has also contributed to tainting the country's image in the sporting sphere. But Turkey wishes to change all of that without its attempts to make, without its attempts to make inroads back into Formula One. And the task lies in the hands of Istanbul Park Circuit, the former home of the Turkish Grand Prix. 
The drive comes from the top. Turkey President Tayyip Erdogan met with the Formula One chief, Mohammed bin Sulayem. Key agenda, bring back the Turkish Grand Prix and the World Rally Championship. Can this truly happen? And if so, what would it mean for Turkey? Formula One is truly a global sport with the calendar snaking its way through many countries world over. Not every city though gets the privilege of hosting a Grand Prix. The 2024 season has 24 Grand Prix races. And here's the thing. Hosting an F1 race means big bucks come into play. The country that bids the highest gets the honour of hosting a Grand Prix. And so it's no surprise that we see more Middle Eastern influence of late. So that's why, given the financial burden that a country needs to incur in order to host the mega event, that many beautiful tracks in the world miss out. Istanbul Park Circuit, the former home of the Turkish Grand Prix, being the biggest example. The Turkish Grand Prix first took place in the year 2005. In its debut season, the circuit generated a lot of attention for just the nature of its track. The beautiful circuit is surrounded by forests and fields, making it a picturesque location for racers. So much so that former Formula One CEO Bernie Eccleston referred to it as the best racetrack in the world. But the scenic beauty could do little in sustaining this. Due to financial disagreements on the costing between F1 and Turkey GP, the Grand Prix only lasted till the year 2011 on the F1 calendar. So, just seven seasons before the fallout and Formula One parting ways with Turkey. But that wasn't the end of it. After almost a decade-long break, Turkey came back into the picture. During the COVID-19 pandemic that brought sporting events across the globe to a standstill, several originally scheduled races were cancelled in 2020. And F1 had to look for alternates and basically the gaze fell on Turkey once again. The Turkish Grand Prix was added to the calendar then. Even in 2021, Turkey stepped in to host the cancelled Singapore Grand Prix. But that was all for the Istanbul circuit. From 2022 onwards, due to financial constraints once again, Turkey failed to bid for the hosting rights. But after three long years, Turkey and its doggedness seems to be the arc of the story. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan met with Mohammed Ben Suleyem, the head of Formula One's governing body, FIA, to discuss the return of both F1 and the World Rally Championship. The reason why fresh talks have resumed is because of a new management stepping in. Can Bilim Egitin Kurumlari, a company part-owned by Lil Kander, who is the chairperson of F1 tyre provider's Turkish branch, has taken over operations at the Istanbul circuit for the next 30 years. The mega deal is estimated to be around $117.8 million. So, with money coming in, Turkey is planning to bring back F1 to the country. Kanda, the chairperson, is hopeful to bid for the 2026 Formula One calendar. Istanbul Park track will be a centre of attraction. Formula One is extremely prestigious and it increases the prestige of the country. There will be countries that will be removed from the calendar in 2026, so races can be held again in Turkey. Apart from Formula One, we will bring other races to Istanbul Park. The urgency and need to get this show running is understandable. In fact, Turkey's tourism minister Mehmet Nuri Ersoy had some days ago openly said that the Istanbul circuit tender would be awarded to the one who can bring back the F1 race to the country. And according to the tender given to the new owners, if the circuit doesn't host a Grand Prix, the operators will have to pay 25% of the F1 hosting contract fee to the Turkey administration. So the pressure on the circuit's new management is immense. But with a larger goal of bringing F1 back to Turkey on everyone's minds, consider the persuasion powers to be sky high. And a strong Turkish comeback is definitely on the cards. Time for last serve. Now, Paris Olympics is just a few months away. And in addition to the city, the French island of Tahiti is gearing up for the event too. 
The island will, of course, host the surfing competitions. Take a look at the preps, even as the island continues to battle and be mired in its own share of controversies. July and August, that's when the Paris Olympics is scheduled to take place. But thanks for joining us here on First Sports. That, of course, comes to the end of our show. Take care. I'll see you again tomorrow. Till then. Bye.